Welcome back to First Watch, a series on my channel where I let fate randomly decide the next film that I get to watch and review. The only rule that I have is that I'm not allowed to have ever seen it before, and this week fate has decided that I should watch a relatively recent film that has been on my radar for a while, but never got to see until now, and that is Disenchanted. This is the sequel to Enchanted. Initially, I didn't want to see this because I had planned to first rewatch Enchanted, but life got in the way, so... When fate pulled this film out, I had no other choice than to get on board with it and check out the sequel. And how was it? Well, let's get cracking. Several years have passed since the events transpired in Enchanted, and now Giselle's life in New York isn't as magical as she had hoped it would be. Now, domestic life has gotten her questioning if it's really what she wants. So one day she makes a magical wish to live a fairy tale life, transforming the real world into a fantasy. But by fairy tale rules, that also means that as a stepmother, she has to abide by those cartoon rules and become an evil stepmother herself. Either she or her family must find a way to reverse the wish before it's too late and the wish is left permanent. To answer on if this film is any good or bad, it, that's not really a fair question because the answer to that's not really binary, it's not yes or no. I liked part of it, but I can't help but compare it to the original, and when I do that, the movie kind of sucks. On its own, it's not terrible. It's not perfect, but it has its own set of charm, and the fact that all the actors really did jump back into their respective characters so well after so many years was a breath of fresh air. I didn't really expect them to pull that off, but they did, and the concept of transforming the real world into a magical fairy tale of itself is also right up the alley of what the series is all about. It essentially turned into a variation of a Cinderella story, and for once, that didn't actually bother me so much because it all fit really nicely. But I do have a few problems with the movie that has nothing to do with comparing it to the first. The first problem is the fact that this movie didn't need to be made at all. It's 100% unnecessary. The next problem is most of the songs I didn't really care about. Musicals like this, especially with Disney, they usually have a hit or two in there that can get stuck in your head, but not true here, at least not for me. All the songs felt more like an obligation to be in there because the first was a musical. Third, and this is the biggest problem of all, there's a major problem with inconsistencies surrounding the main characters. And this is something that I don't know if I can forgive. What do I mean by that? I mean, when the film first begins, you get to see a very real side to Giselle and her family, a very domestic side of things. Nobody's happy, everybody's questioning all the choices that they make, it's boring, but it's real. And you understand where the characters are coming from, where they are mentally, and how they feel incomplete. But when Giselle makes her wish, suddenly those very real human problems that her family has vanish. And they all act like stupid cartoon characters singing and dancing when normally they wouldn't. And those problems that they initially had aren't really resolved at the end either. It's pretty much entirely ignored. And again, I don't know if I can forgive that because Giselle made that wish because she didn't want to deal with it. Deal with her stepdaughter's issues particularly, and she makes a wish and changes their entire being. What makes them, them. She changes everything. And to top it all off, she doesn't seem to care. She seems satisfied. She seems to celebrate the fact that her daughter no longer acts like her daughter would normally act. She doesn't say, oh crap, where's my daughter? That's not her because I know my daughter. I prefer who she really is. I'm gonna change this. Giselle doesn't do that. Again, she celebrates it. She accepts it as a good thing. And this is before she even starts changing into the wicked stepmother. I don't think that that was the point, but I do think that was an oversight by the writers. An oversight because what they wanted to happen was, you know, bigger picture stuff. The bigger picture being the fantasy change in the town. But they ignored the little things that actually make a movie like this feel magical. Also, and this is a much smaller gripe, I don't think the animation of the cartoon land was as good as the first movie. This felt more digital, while if I remember correctly, the first felt more hand-drawn, which always looked better, especially when what you're going for is the look and the feel of classic Disney, which the first movie had. This one felt more modern and digital, which felt weird to me. That's more of a random thought, though. Let's go ahead and break down my final score for Disenchanted, which I gave... A B minus letter grade, final overall score of 70%, 70 out of 100 possible stars. You can see from my unbiased and biased scores down below that I commend it for being well made on a technical level, so that's where the 80% comes into play. 
but how I personally felt about it, or my bias score, that's 60% because I just wasn't that impressed with it overall and was easily one of the most unnecessary sequels that Disney has ever made, period, and its inconsistent vibes with the characters kind of got on my nerves. But what about you guys though? What did you think about Disenchanted? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Do you think that it was a film that was indeed warranted? Please let me know. And as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.